Let's talk about the example of a k-bit counter, a counter that has k bits which we flip independently and that we start at zero and then increment zero, one, two, and so on. In the example here, k is equal to six, which means that the counter can hold all the values from zero to 63. In general, a k-bit counter can hold values from zero to two to the k minus one. Because we say that we're going to flip every bit individually, all of the operations don't all have the same cost. The very first flip that I do only has to flip a single zero to one, which means that its total cost is one flip. But later on, I might have to, in addition to flipping a single zero to one, flip multiple ones to zero because of the carrying process, which means that later uh, uh, operations can have a higher cost. Eventually, I'm going to reach the point where all of my bits are one, and when I increment that, well, assuming I'm following module arithmetic, I'll flip every bit back to zero for a worst case cost of k flips. In terms of big O notation, we would say that our worst case cost is in big O of k. The question we want to talk about today is, what is the cost of doing in increment operations Because the worst case cost is k, and we're going to be doing that operation in times, a bound that we could give is to say that the operations will take less than k times n, which means that the overall process is in big O of k times n. And this is true, but it's not the tightest bound that we're going to be able to give to the, the series of n flips. To see why, let's actually track the total cost after every increment in our little example. Initially, we've done zero flips in total. After one operation, we've only done one flip. But then we have to do a more expensive operation, so the total is three. The next operation is cheap, so we only go up to four, but the following one is more expensive. We go all the way up to seven. Then eight, 10, 11, and finally the most expensive operation we've considered, taking us up to 15. Let's pay attention to this point right here, the 7 and the 15. The 7 comes after we've done 4 increment operations, and the 15 after we've done 8. In each of these cases, after we've done a really expensive operation, it doesn't look like our total cost is well modeled by k times n. Instead, what it looks like is that after four steps, we've done about four times two, which is eight flips in total, one less than that. And after eight steps, we've done eight times two, which is 16 total. In other words, in addition to our actual costs, we can observe, and again, this isn't a proof at all, that we could come up, uh, that it seems like we could come up with a predicted cost. And the predicted cost is that after in operations, we will have done two times n flips. That would say that after eight operations, we would have done 16 flips, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Obviously, the prediction is never right, but the prediction is always too high. If we could get to the point where we could prove that our prediction was always greater than or equal to, in terms of the number of flips, the actual cost that we actually had to pay, 
we would be able to prove that in increment operations would take time less than two times n. And that, well, it is in big O of k times n, but there's a simpler bound, which is that that's in big O of n. Let's take another look at what this looks like in terms of a graph. What we're saying is that we've got a predicted value that grows steadily over time. where if n is the number of times the counter has been uh, incremented, then the predicted uh, number of steps is 2 times n. We're observing, though we haven't proven yet, that our actual value goes up, but it never seems to pass the predicted value. Based on what we know about big O notation, because the predicted value is definitely in big O of n, and the actual is always less than or equal to the predicted, then this would let us say that the actual cost of doing the n operations was in big O of n, which is better than the previous bound we were able to give, which was big O of n times k. Let's summarize this one more time. The worst case cost of a single increment operation is k, which is in big O of k. However, the total cost of in increment operations appears to be less than 2 times n, which means that the cost of a series of in increment operations is in big O of n. What this tells us is that talking about the worst case cost of an increment operation isn't actually a very informative or useful way of thinking about the series of n operations. If we wanted to talk about the series of n operations in terms of the individual operations, it would make sense to say that, OK, over a series of n increment operations, on average, costs 2 times n, which is the total cost, over n, which is the number of operations, which is equal to 2. However, and this is relatively important, we don't use the word average here. Uh, when we talk about complexity. So we have a fancy word that we use for this kind of average, which is to say the amortized cost is 2 which is in big O of 1. So this gives us an example of where amortized cost is a useful concept. We're actually going to be able to show that performing n increment operations takes at most two times n bit flips in the k-bit counter. Using the amortized cost as the cost of every operation means that we will slightly overestimate the total cost. But if we use the worst case cost, which is k, we would have wildly overestimated the total cost of performing n operations. So even though the worst case cost is in fact going to be big O of k, in the example of a k-bit counter, it's more useful to talk about the amortized cost of a single operation.